Plaintiff calls Laura Wasser by deposition, Your Honor. W A S S E R. Thank you. Will you please state your name and address for the record? Laura Allison Wasser, Wasser, Cooperman and Mandels, Suite 800, 2049 Century Park East, Los Angeles, California, 90049. Thank you. What is your occupation? I'm an attorney at law. And how long have you been an attorney? 26 years. You represented Mr. Depp in the divorce against Amber Heard, is that correct? Yes. And you are here under subpoena? Yes. Your practice has primarily been focused on domestic relations in California, is that correct? Yes. Are you a member of any bar other than California? No. During the period 2012 to 2016, was California a no-fault state with respect to divorce? The answer is that California was a no-fault state during that period. During the period 2012 to 2016, was California a community property state with respect to the division of assets in the divorce? Yes. And, and what does that mean to you? California is a community property state and what that means to me is that assets which were earned or created during the course of the marriage absent some other theory of law applied be divided equally. And what do you mean by absent some theory or, or law applied? I'm sorry Elaine what was the question? Oh a theory of law when I say a theory of law, I mean if there's a premarital agreement, if there's some other, um, it's not completely uh, blanket community property. There may be things that were earned from a separate property source that would not be considered community property. So I was just trying to provide for the record some exceptions to what would be considered community property and therefore divided equally. Now, if someone alleges domestic violence or abuse against their spouse, would that change the amount they would otherwise be entitled to under community property laws? No. In obtaining a temporary restraining order, what is your understanding of the process? The moving party files generally with uh, 24 hours notice to the person who is being accused of domestic violence, a declaration and forms with the court and requests a temporary domestic violence restraining order that will generally last no longer than a 21 day period when the defendant is able to make his or her arguments as to why such a restraining order would be inappropriate. And the temporary restraining order, can it be continued? Yes. When did you first begin representing Mr. Depp relating to his divorce with Amber Heard? Uh, I believe it was in December of 2015. I'm going to ask you to pull up document one, Wasser document one, and let's go ahead and label that as Wasser exhibit number one. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser deposition exhibit number one. It is a letter dated May 24, 2016. It's addressed to Jacob Bloom uh, and it says re in remarriage of death. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and it's from Samantha Spector who indicates she's representing Amber Heard. As of the time of this letter, had you made known to 
Amber Heard or Ms. Spector or anyone else related to them that you represented Mr. Depp? I don't believe so. Did you receive a copy of this letter from someone? I believe so. I think I've seen it before, so yes. Did you receive this letter on or around May 24, 2016? Okay, next page, please. Hang on. Yes, it was around that time. Around May 24, 2016? Yes. Did you have any communications with Samantha Spector in connection with this letter? Yes. And when you say within days, could it have been the same day, May 24th, the next day, 25th? Possibly. I'm going to direct your attention to the next paragraph. It says, to this end, please have Johnny promptly sign and return by Friday, May 27, 2016, the enclosed notice of acknowledgement receipt form, confirming service of the summons petition law case cover sheet and blank response. Did you do that? This letter was not directed to me, Elaine. No, I, I understand it, but it was given to you, correct? I believe so. And you were representing Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And Mr. Bloom did not represent Mr. Depp in connection with the, the divorce, correct? Correct. So once Mr. Bloom gave this to you, then did you represent Mr. Depp going forward in communications with Samantha Spector? Once we received this letter, our firm took over with representation of Mr. Depp in the dissolution action. I cannot recall whether or not the request made was done by Friday, May 27th, but I believe that it was. Probably have that notice and acknowledgement of receipt somewhere with a date on it. Now, the next section, I think, is something that you referred to earlier. It said, in addition, we are requesting on Amber's behalf the following, and it talks about, it says, appropriate pendente light support. Did you have an understanding of what that amount might be at the time that you saw this letter? I did not have an understanding of what appropriate pendente light support would be at that time. Did you ask Samantha Spector? I don't recall. I don't recall our specific communications regarding her requests. Do you recall making any kind of counter to any of these items? All I recall is that without any notice to us at 830 in the morning on the 27th, Samantha Spector and her client went into court and obtained a no notice ex parte restraining order. Had you had any communications with Samantha Spector prior to her going into court on that Friday, May 27th? Yes. How many communications had you had with Ms. Spector prior, following getting this letter and prior to her going into court at 830 on May 27th, 2016? I do not recall. Do you have a recollection of whether any of the communications that you had with Ms. Spector between the receipt of this letter that's dated May 24, 2016 and Ms. Spector going into court on Friday, May 27, 2016 related in any way to requests on your behalf, on behalf of your client that you made? No. You recall having communications with Samantha Spector 
between May 24 and May 27, you can't recall how many and you can't recall the specifics of those communications. Is that accurate? It's not accurate. And in what way? Please tell me. I recall that we had communications between the 24th and probably the 26th. I doubt we spoke on the morning of the 27th before she went into court. I do not know the content of those communications and I do not know how many communications were had. Now on the next paragraph, it has a proposal for private retired judicial officers. Ultimately, did you and Ms. Spector talk about using private retired judicial officers, whether it was the list she provided or any others? I believe so, yes. And what do you recall? My recollection is that is in almost all of our cases, certainly those with high profile clients, we would have liked to take it out of the system. Ms. Spector was not willing to do that with this case. What do you recall Ms. Spector saying to indicate that she did not want to take it out of the public space? I don't recall her saying anything. Okay. Now, after your understanding was that a Kletz DV TRO was in fact obtained on Friday, May 27, 2016 by Ms. Hurd against Mr. Jeff, correct? That is my understanding. After that, did there come a time that you or anyone on, on, at your law firm communicated with the Eastern Columbia building concierge staff or management? Was, was those the downtown lofts? The, the, the penthouse lofts, yes. It's, and if it's easier for you, everyone's been referring to the Eastern Columbia building as ECB. Would that be helpful at all? Sure. Or we can, if you prefer to call them the penthouse loft building, that's fine too. Now that we've identified them, I understand what you're talking about. We can call them whatever you'd like. Uh, did someone from my firm speak with somebody uh, at the at those buildings? Yes. And who from your firm spoke with someone at the buildings and when? I believe either I did or my partner, Samantha Klein, or an associate who is also working on the case, Lisa Sutton from our firm. We also had co-counsel on the case. They may have been involved. As to when, I have to imagine it was sometime in June or July of 2016. Now, you, you indicated either you or Samantha Klein or Lisa Sutton, and you also had co-counsel. Do you have a specific recollection of speaking with anyone at the ECB building? I don't. What were Samantha Klein's communications with the ECB building? I don't know. Were, what were Samantha Klein's communication with, EC, with the ECB building? Okay. And her answer was, I don't know. Thank you. What were, what were Lisa Sutton's communications with the ECB building? I don't know. What were your co-counsel's communications with the ECB building. And when I say ECB building, I'm not talking about the structure, I'm talking about the individuals who worked there. Did I you? Don't. And just so we're clear here, you don't recall any communications with the ECB building staff as well, correct? You asked me if I had a specific recollection. I do not. Do you have a general recollection? I believe that at some point we subpoenaed the building's records of 
the uh, video from the lobby and elevator areas. So I would imagine that the communications would have to do with those subpoenas. Are you able to testify to any conversation you or anyone at your firm or your co-counsel had with the ECB building staff? I am sure that there were conversations and communications regarding the production of the subpoenaed documents, review of the subpoenaed documents, um, that are compliance with, I believe it was Ms. Spector's subpoena that was sent, uh, our ability to review the videos, coordination of same, but I don't have a specific recollection of any communications. Are you able to speak to whether there were any conversations between you, anyone at your law firm or your co-counsel and ECB building personnel prior to your issuing the subpoena? Also, I don't believe that the subpoena was issued by our firm. As so, you so you don't have a recollection of a subpoena being issued on Mr. Depp's behalf for the ECB building surveillance tapes? I don't know. I know there was one issued. I believe it was issued by Ms. Spector. Let's talk about the videos that you just referred to from the ECB building staff. How did you and your firm or your co-counsel receive these videos? I don't recall. I would imagine uh, like a, a, a e file or something like that. Now, is it your recollection that there was just one e file that contained all of the surveillance tapes? I don't have a recollection as to whether it was one or seven or what. I just don't know. When you were talking about receiving, the video surveillance footage on whatever, whether it was one file or seven files, whether it was eight file or whatever, did you have any understanding that you were not provided the full amount that was requested, whatever the amount was? No. So you thought you received whatever you were supposed to receive, is that fair? Yes. What did you do with the actual surveillance video footage that you received? I believe we kept it on the computer at least for the next couple of months in preparation for trial. Do I don't know where it is now. That's my next question. Is there a time that you no longer possess the video surveillance? footage that was sent to you by the ECB building. I don't know. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 2, and it's a multi-page document, um, and so I'm going to scroll down a little bit, but you, can, you let me know if I'm going too fast here. Um, it's dated June 3rd, and it's to Samantha Klein. She's with your first, she was working with you on the death case, correct? Correct. Okay. And it's from Samantha Spector, which you can see there, and we'll show you the signature later. Um, and it's litigation hold preservation of information, and it's <coughs> not limited to electronically stored information. Do you see that? Yes. Do you recall receiving this letter? And if you want me to scroll down and let you read each page, I'm happy to do that first. I'm familiar with this letter. I recall receiving it. <clears throat> and did you receive this letter before you received the surveillance 
footage from the ECB building? Um, I am not sure. Well, I think you had indicated that you thought that it was in June or July that you received the surveillance footage. Is that still your best recollection? I, looking at the date and knowing the chronology of the case, it is my best estimate that we received this letter prior to the time that we received the video footage. Ms. Wasser. What steps did you and your firm and co-counsel take to preserve the surveillance video footage of ECB from the time you received it going forward? I think the absence of us doing anything to destroy the video footage would be the most I could testify regarding in terms of steps that we took to preserve the video footage. Are you aware of any destruction of the video footage, the surveillance video footage from ECB up to the present? No, I, I, we probably still have it. Have, have you looked for it? No. Have you been asked to look for it? No. I'm going to ask you to take a look at uh, what has now been marked as Washington Deposition Exhibit Number Three, uh, and it's dated June 6, 2013, uh, addressed to you, and it's from Charles Carter. Did you have an understanding that Mr. Carter also represented Amber Heard? I did when I received this letter on June 6. Okay. And did you have an understanding that Mr. Carter was also asking you to preserve? Any evidence? Yes. Okay. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 4. It's dated June 6 as well, and it's to Charles Carter uh, from your phone. Uh, and you are acknowledging receipt of the preservation demand letter from Ms. Heard as well as his, uh, and you indicated we are fully aware of our obligations with respect to the preservation of evidence. Please rest assured that we intend to comply with the preservation demand and expect that Ms. Bird will do so as well. Do you recall saying that in this letter? Yes. And was this letter in fact from you to Mr. Harder? It was. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 5. It's a letter dated June 21, 2016 to Samantha Spector, Charles Carter, and Leonard Levine, I think it's pronounced, Remarriage of Death. And it's from it's Klein, Samantha Klein. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And you are copied on it. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And Ms. Klein worked with your law firm? Yes. And represented Mr. Depp as well? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go back up to the beginning to call your attention to a particular section. It says, this letter shall confirm the agreements we reached yesterday with respect to the pending domestic violence proceedings. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go down to the media press and it says neither party nor his or her respective counsel representatives or agents shall make any comments in the media or press pertaining to this dissolution action, the civil action pending against Doug Spinell and or any pending or future litigation between or and or involving the parties. Do you see that? Yes. All right. Does that uh, accurately reflect the agreement that was made between uh, the parties with respect to Amber Heard and Mr. Depp and communications with the press? Yes. Do, do you know Liz Walters? Who? Liz Walters? Yes. And who is she? She is a reporter. For? I believe she works for her brother's online media outlet called The Blast. 
Did you have any communications with Liz Walters during the Depp Heard divorce? I don't recall. Did you have any communications with TMZ relating to the Depp Heard divorce? I don't recall. Now, the what, do you recall what the date was for the permanent uh, TRO, temporary restraining order? <laughs> Do you recall the date that you said that early on, 21 days after the temporary restraining order is typically the date that's set for the hearing for the defendant if they want to come in and oppose it or if the uh, petitioner wants to extend it? Do you recall what the first date was? I don't, but I would imagine it was probably at some point in early June. All right. And then do you recall that date being continued? I do. How many times? At least twice, possibly three times. I think that the final date was at some point in August and we settled right before then. All right, can, Alan, can we bring up number, document number seven? Thank you, Alan. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Exhibit Number 7. It is dated August 5, 2016. It is to you from Samantha Spector. Do you see that? Yes. Do you recall? Did, did you receive this document? Doesn't it say at the top that it's protected under 1152? It sure does. All I'm asking you is whether you received it. I'm not, not asking you about the substance. I don't remember. Do you have any reason to believe you did not receive it? I don't. Well, sir, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 8. Uh, and it starts out with an email from Samantha Spector to Amber on August 6, 2016. Um, do you recall what was going on on or around August 16 in this divorce, in connection with the divorce? Not specifically, no. Do you know who Christian Carino is? I do. Okay, who is he? He's an agent, a creative artist agency. How long had you known Christian Carino? I've known of Christian for maybe 10 years. Were you aware that Mr. Carino was involved in organizing, if you will, or assisting Mr. Depp and his firm with uh, uh, their own meeting to try to resolve their case up in San Francisco. Possibly. That sounds vaguely familiar. Were you on the telephone at any point while Amber Heard and Johnny Depp were meeting to discuss attempted resolution, resolution of the issues during the summer of 2016? What was your question? Was I on the telephone? Yes. Were you on the telephone where Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard were in the hotel room and were talking? No. Were you ever on the telephone when Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp were together talking during the summer of 2016, no matter where they were? On the telephone? Yes. No. While he was with Ms. Heard, and Ms. Heard was on speaker, and you were on speakerphone with the two of them. No. You recognize the name under Mr. Christian. 
Do you Joe, recognize the name on what? Joe Sweeney. I do. And who was he? Joe Sweeney is a forensic accountant uh, who specializes in family law forensic accounting, and he was Ms. Hurd's forensic accountant in the DISO matter. And was Edward White acting as the forensic accountant for Mr. Depp? No. Did Mr. White provide the documentation that was then submitted to Samantha Spector as counsel for Ms. Hurd? I believe it came from Mr. White's office. Also probably of note is the fact that uh, Mr. Depp changed business management shortly before or during the course of the case. So it is possible that some of the documents came from predecessor business manager. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Wasser Deposition Exhibit Number 10. And I'm not going to ask you any specific questions, so I don't need you to have to review it in detail unless you'd like to, and you're certainly welcome to spend as much time as you'd like on it. But I'm just going to go down to the end of it. And I'm going to ask if this is the deal point memorandum that you referred to that was finalized on August 15, 2016. Since the party's signatures appear at the bottom, as well as Ms. Spector's and mine, I believe that this is the deal point memorandum that to which I was referring. Okay. Is there any reason to believe that it is not the, the final deal point memorandum? No. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as Wasser deposition exhibit number 11. Uh, and it's a series of documents an FL-150, for example, and then that's page 404, and then it goes into the next part, one of one. Just try to page through it for you just so you can see generally. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Could you tell me what it is, please? It looks to be one of the parties, I guess, Mr. Depp's uh, what we call in California preliminary or perhaps final declaration of disclosure. It's just financial disclosure forms. Ms. Wasser, I'm going to ask you if you can take a look at what has been marked as Wasser exhibit number 12. And it's a um, many pages, I think it's 50 total. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Can you tell me what it is? It's parties related judgment for dissolution of marriage. There a specific amount that was paid to Amber Heard as part of this divorce settlement and judgment for objection document i'm sorry me, for her claims of domestic violence including any claims of assault battery intentional or negligent infliction of emotional distress libel slander and or defamation i don't believe that we segregated out what the total amount was being paid for did you make any effort to seal s-e-a-l the records in this case, and I'm referring to the case in front of us, the uh, 
the, the uh, marriage or partnership of Amber Laura Depp and John Christopher Depp II filed in Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. When you say seal, do you mean by the court to ask the court to the, the seal the file? Yes. I don't believe so. And why not? <laughs> We don't do that. I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 13. And this is a subpoena of you for this deposition. Did you receive that? Do, do, you, want, do you want me to scroll through it? Would you like to? No, I, I, I believe that we received it. All right. And, and you are testifying pursuant to this subpoena, correct? I am. I'm going to ask you to look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 14. Um, and this is for the corporate designee of Wasser, Cooperman, and Mandos. You see that? I do. Or today's deposition. Is it your understanding that you are the corporate designee on behalf of Wasser, Cooperman, and Mandels speaking today? Yes. Thank you. 